Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Dear brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome to this uh, Love Sheikha Q&A session. Inshallah, I'm going to be having these uh, sessions every Friday, sorry, every last Friday, uh, every last Friday of the month uh, at around this time, 6 p.m. Um, and uh, on Twitter spaces um, in audio form. So it's going to be, a, inshallah, an opportunity for people because uh, actually, you know, I do get a lot of questions that people send in to me uh, related to issues to do with marriage or, you know, relationships, love, all of those kind of um, related topics. And so I thought this would be a good way for for me to be able to answer some of those questions, just share some of my thoughts, advice, uh, insights, or just things for you to consider, you know. Um, I'm not giving any type, kind of fatwa here. I'm not giving any kind of... Uh, uh, verdict or uh, compelling you to do anything here, right? Uh, but sometimes we just need somebody to share a question with and hear their take on a particular issue, especially somebody who has experience, uh, you know, has studied Islamic law, etc., etc., right? So I hope that um, I can help you in that regard. But of course, I always encourage people to seek advice from people in their own locality, uh, people of knowledge, but also people who have expertise in whatever issue it is that you are facing. The first question I have here is, how much does attraction matter? So, well, look, one of the purposes of marriage is to satisfy uh our sexual desires right and to help a person lower their gaze that's that's one of the purposes of marriage so it, it goes without saying that that means that of course uh our spouse or the person who we're considering for marriage you know we should take into account that they are attractive to us right and there's nothing wrong with that you know it's not like um I don't know, it's not like a less pious thing to do or something like that, you know, to want to marry somebody who is attractive, who we find attractive. And again, it's a very personal thing, isn't it? It's a very personal thing. What somebody finds attractive, another person might not find attractive. So so that's why I think, you know, it's, it's, it's important for parents um, to give their children freedom in that regard, you know, when it comes to uh, whether they find somebody attractive or not, uh, when it comes to marriage, you know. A person might be excellent on paper in terms of, you know, their, their religiosity, uh, their character, and all of those other things. And those other things are very, very important, right? But if a person doesn't, like, literally does not feel attracted to that person at all, or even worse, uh, you know, is actually repe repelled by some characteristic or some thing about that person, then, you know, I would say that it's something not to ignore, you know. It's not something to ignore. At the same time, uh, let's, uh, you know, keep things in perspective. So, you know, when the Prophet ﷺ told us that a woman is married for four things, her beauty, her lineage, her wealth, and he said her religion, and he said, you know, take the one who has religion. Yeah. And that, that was his advice. If you want to be successful, take the one who has religion. But that hadith doesn't actually say that the other characteristics are not important. Do you see? 
the Prophet Sallallahu is merely stating a fact that human beings, human beings, when they uh, are looking for marriage, they usually, uh, like in, in this case, he's talking to the men, they, you know, you, you usually marry somebody because her beauty is something that appeals to you or her lineage, you know, I mean, she's from a particular family and you really respect that family and you want connections with that family for example right and especially this used to happen especially in the past right uh, it still happens nowadays with the royal families right <laughs> like um they don't they want to keep their lineage in a certain to a certain level right um uh, or somebody might be attracted to a woman because of her wealth you know she comes from a wealthy background and you know this this is just human nature people get people are attracted to one another for various reasons but the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying yeah all of those things are things that people marry a woman for but the most important thing is religion the most important thing and so the way i would put that to people is look if uh, a person has beauty has lineage, has wealth, has all the, whatever characteristics are important to you, but they don't have religion, right? <clears throat> In other words, their relationship with Allah is messed up. Then, you know, that's, that should be a red flag for a believer, right? That should be a red flag for a believer. However, if a person has deen, is, is a religious person, and they have other good characteristics, you know, good character, etc. And maybe on the beauty front, on the handsomeness front, right? There's, it's not exactly, you know, like the, 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 the perfect image you had in mind, right? Uh, then as long as that person, you know, you, you do find them generally attractive, okay? I would say it's definitely worth considering them. You know, it doesn't have to be that that person is whatever your view of an ideal woman or an ideal man is because that view of an ideal woman or an ideal man is probably something you got from Disney or Bollywood or Hollywood or you know some image or something that you've been bombarded with from a young age right so you don't want to listen to that right uh, at the same time, like I said, attraction is important. So, you know, I would say the most important consideration is the in, but all the other considerations or whatever considerations are important to you are also, you know, they're worthy of uh, your attention and they're also natural. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam encouraged uh, a man who, who was going to get married to actually look at uh, his perspective, his prospective bride, you know, in some cultures, uh, it's seen as perfectly normal for uh, people to get married without even really meeting or seeing each other, you know. But that's not something that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam encouraged. He encouraged us to, if we're considering somebody seriously for marriage, to look at them you know to actually look uh because well how else are you going to know whether there is some uh you know whether they they are pleasing to you right so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh in the hadith he said jabir bin abdullah he said the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said if one of you proposes marriage to a woman if he can look at her to see that which uh, will encourage him to go ahead and marry her, then let him do so. Um, and then uh, Jabir said, I proposed marriage to a young woman and I used to hide where I could see her until I saw that which encouraged me to go ahead and marry her. So I did so. According to another report, he said, a young woman of Bani Salama, I used to hide from her until I saw that which encouraged me to go ahead and marry her. So I did so. Hadith in Abu Dawood. 
Um, another hadith in uh, Sahih Muslim, uh, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu says, I was with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam when a man came and told him that he had married a woman of the Ansar. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said to him, Have you seen her? He said, No. He said, Go and look at her, for there is something in the eyes of the Ansar. So I think there's some kind of, um, you know, impediment or something. Uh, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, you know, you might want to check, you might want to see, you know, um, and check the person out properly, physically, right? Another hadith in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, look at her. So he asked uh, the Sahabi, he asked him, you know, have you seen her? And he said, no. He said, look at her because it is more fitting that love and compatibility be established between you. Um, and in another report, he said, uh, so he did that and he married her and mentioned they got along. They got along well. OK, so um, th there are a number of narrations where the Prophet Wasallam encouraged looking, right? Um, and so, you know, the scholars, they have different opinions when it comes to like how much you can look at, uh, like how much of a prospective spouse you can look at. Obviously, women, they can look at the men, right, easily, um, because a man usually, you know, the body is normally covered, but the face and hands and head and everything, they can see them easily, right? See if you're attracted to the person quite easily. But the other way around uh you know there are various opinions but some scholars said you know not without a head cover right uh the main thing is that he should look at her face her hands um and this is when you're actually seriously considering somebody for marriage right it's not like you know casually going around uh spying on people or <laughs> trying to uh, check them out, right? Uh, this is when you're seriously considering them for marriage. Um, and some scholars even allowed more than that, you know, to actually look at uh, somebody's feet, to look at their forearm even. I mean, the point is, you know, look at the person. Right. Don't feel shy to 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 look because, you know, you need to look in order to to know whether you're attracted to that person. Right. Another uh, thing that some uh, scholars suggest, and this is just something that, you know, people do uh, is actually get like the women of your family to to look if like if you're a brother, uh, get the women of your family to see the lady right see the sister that you're considering for marriage uh, without her hijab and it's allowed for those women to describe her to you right like enough for you to know like whether you'd be attracted to that to her or not right um and of course you know the women of your family they might even especially like if it's your a close sister or your mom or they they would have an idea of you know, whether you would find her attractive, right? So that's another way that you can kind of um, check. On the other hand, I would say that just be aware that because we have been heavily affected, you know, in our times, the average man, the average woman is bombarded with so many images of the ideal male and female physique the ideal male and female looks right and half the time you know uh, these models and these images that we're presented with are not even real images you know flawless skin and i don't know you know large lips and parts of the body and eyelashes impossible eyelashes and hair extensions and you know people don't realize that the average image of a model or a woman, for example, and even a man that you're exposed to, they are airbrushed images. They're not real, right? And so sometimes our 
idea of what attractive is has been warped. So just be aware of that and be aware that the more you lower your gaze, the more you make it a habit to lower your gaze in your everyday life and not expose yourself to so many images of the opposite sex, the more, inshallah, you will find the average human being attractive. Believe me, right? Like in the past, think about it. Think about your parents' generation or your grandparents' generation, right? The average man would find the average woman attractive, right? The average woman would find the average man attractive. Probably because they had not spent their life bombarded with image after image after image of women and men, right? So when they see a normal man, they think, yeah, mashallah, that person, you know, is attractive. And, and the other way around as well. But in our times, you know, they say that uh, the average person sometimes in one day or in one week would come across more images of the opposite sex than uh, a person in the past would in their entire lifetime. So can you imagine what effect that must be having on our psychology, right? No doubt, no doubt there is some effect. You can't say that there's absolutely no effect, right? So what I'm saying here is let us uh, be aware that we've been affected by that and let us lower our gaze on a day-to-day -day basis. On an ordinary, everyday basis, if you lower your gaze, then Allah will give you a sweetness uh, so that when you see an average person, a, 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 you know, a, a normal person, basically, for marriage, you would find that person attractive because you don't have some kind of warped uh, image of what beauty is. And also bear in mind that somebody who is not immediately extremely attractive to you Okay, like they are attractive, but they're not like maybe exactly the sort of person that you were thinking of, etc., etc. Believe me, that person can grow in attraction to you after marriage, especially if they have good character, if they, um, you know, have a good demeanor, etc., etc. So don't be too obsessed with looks. Definitely take looks into account. Definitely, you know, feel uh, attracted to the person, you know. But don't be too obsessed with it because, you know, there are people who marry somebody who's extremely attractive. But when they get married, that person's character is so flawed or that person's personality is so annoying that no matter how good they look after the kind of initial honeymoon period, that person doesn't, feel, doesn't seem attractive anymore. Doesn't seem attractive anymore. And so the opposite is also true. Sometimes there might be somebody who is, you know, just quite ordinary looking to you, right? But decent, you know, in appearance. Uh, but they have such a good character and they have such a good personality and they're just, just, have such a nice, uh, you know, uh, mannerism when it comes to being with you. And of course, you know, when you get married, you have romance, you have, you spend time together, etc. that the attraction grows, the attraction grows. Okay. So be aware of that as well, you know? So I think I've answered that question, inshallah, how much does attraction matter? Uh, like I said, it's a very personal thing. Uh, but taking attraction into account is important but also remember that attraction grows it can grow over time yazdadu shawqi laki rafiqat darbi